Hello, good people of YouTube. Mountbatten here. And as always, Wargaming has some more crazy announcements for us coming out of the dev blog and some pretty darn interesting ones here as well, as long as some information that we have been waiting for, which includes the exact removal time of the Curve first and the Kabaldosk from the game into the, well, not from the game, but from the tech tree into the armory. That is when patch 11.1 .1 drops. So if there's anything you get away from this dev blog video, you need to get grinding the GK and the Kabrosk if you want to save about 500,000 coal. You will get the GK and the Kabrosk, the premium ship variants, for free if you grind them out right now. You don't have to purchase them. Just grind them out, research them, don't purchase them, and you'll get the Kaba and the GK with the permanent camos, the premium ship versions, with 11.1. .1. That is not the next patch, which will be coming out, I believe, the 19th? But the one after that, this will be the February patch. So, again, if there's one thing you get away from this video, it's that. But anyway, let's go ahead and get into the rest of it. We have a couple of changes to some test ships, along with a new mode featuring airships of all things let's go ahead and dive right on into this i will link to the dev blogs in the description down below any relevant images or artwork will be thrown up on the screen as we go through the video and again this is all in testing and all this could change let's go ahead and get into it in the order of release starting with the changes to test ships so close test changes to test ships we adjusted the parameters of ships based on testing results the changes will be applied to Canaries, Dido, Forrest Sherman, Incomprehensible, Incomparable, Prussian, Pan-Asian Cruisers, and Italian Didis. So starting with the Canaries, the Tier 6 Spanish Cruiser, they have removed her Burst Fire alter Alternative Mode. Maximum main battery range, fi uh, firing range increased from 14.5 to 16.5 kilometers. They also added the engine boost consumable that increases the ship's maximum speed by 15%. And the main battery reload time was decreased from 15 seconds to 10 seconds. And they also changed the parameters of the, of the AP shells. Maximum damage increased from 3,800 to 4,500. Armor penetration increased by 2. So if you don't remember the gimmick of the canaries was that in her alternative fire mode instead of turning to like a famas like the uh the uh shoot whatever the um, french super cruiser um is called or turning into a um an m16 like the uh, annapolis it would get a two round burst and also increase the penetration of the ap and increase the accuracy that's gone now now it's just a normal cruiser so they state, the Canaries is one of the first ships in our game on which we tested the alternative fire mode mechanics. The new mechanics performed well on the Canaries, but it still requires a number of tweaks and improvements before it is used outside super ships. That's why we removed the alternative fire mode for the ship, compensating for it by strengthening the main caliber guns and adding a new consumable. So, Canaries is going to play like a normal cruiser now, which I'm kind of glad they did that. Because it is the first ship of Spain that we're getting in the game. And I would hate for a, a, a nation's first ship to potentially just be made useless in maybe a year or so with some other gimmick that's going to come out. I mean, look, look at the ships that rely on gimmicks in the game. They've gotten usually worse over time, but ships that just rely on good old-fashioned characteristics and you know slight differences in the ammunition characteristics and such, like the Montana literally tied as the oldest battleship in the game still a fearsome battleship today but more gimmicky ships they've kind of faded over time so i'm glad they're they've moved away from that with the canaries all right the dido which is the tier 6 british light cruiser main battery real time increased from 6.5 to 8.5 seconds that's a big increase now, the Dido has many a gun, many a rapid firing gun, but 8.5 seconds. It is at tier 6, though, so it is understandable you don't want an absolute machine gun running down there at tier 6. I mean, we got the Atlanta already, so this is basically a slightly smaller Atlanta um, in terms of, again, a uh, light cruiser just bristling with guns. So, yeah, that's a pretty big nerf. They probably toned that down, if I, I would imagine, a little bit before it gets removed. The Sevastopol, the tier 10... Soviet super cruiser. This is a Kronstadt with 15 inch guns instead of her uh, Stalingrad guns. So they have removed the engine boost consumable, the fast damage control team replaced by damage con, so it has a normal damage con now instead of the Soviet BB damage con. 
Change the parameters of the repair party consumable. Reload time increased from 70 seconds to 200 seconds. 200 seconds, dang. Action time increased from 60 to 90 seconds. Number of consumables reduced from 4 to 3. Restoration of hit points per second increased from 187 to 313. Restoration of hit points after receiving damage to the Citadel increased from 10% to 33%. Restoration of hit points after receiving damage to the parts of the hull increased from 50 to 75%. So, it's a more normal heal. Originally, the Sevastopol had like, I think like seven charges of this heal that was, um, that was just, shoot, short, no, no, no. It was long duration, like it took it forever to, I think it was like freaking... Um, yeah, 60 seconds to repair like an eighth or like a, a fourth of the amount of what a um, normal repair would. But you had like seven charges and, and they reloaded, I think originally in 60 seconds too. But now it's more normal. It's got a pretty long cooldown time, 200 seconds. That's um, two minutes, uh, three, over three minutes for a cooldown time. Now it is the Kronstadt hull, which is a very, very strong hull to have, but it is at tier 10. Kronstadt's a tier 9 ship, and, you know, Winston in a tier 9 game is fairly tanky, but in a tier 10 game, ah. Now, it is 50, this is a 15-inch guns, too, so it probably won't be in as many fights as the Kronstadt will be, because these 15-inch guns are much more accurate than Kronstadt's uh, guns. But, yeah, they've, they've started to normalize the hill a bit. It's still a pretty long duration. I mean, 90 seconds to repair the ship, but, I mean... It's a better heal, of course, but we'll see how that comes out. It's, God, they, they have tried so hard with this ship. So many gimmicks and such. Anyway, moving on down to the fourth Sherman. Number of smoke generators consumables reduced from three to two. So you can get three of Superintendent now instead of four. Um, yeah, one less smoke heal. Uh, smoke heal. Oh, that's, yeah, I'm sure that'll be a consumable before much longer. One less smoke, which seems to suck for a American DD. So, yeah, this ship must be pretty crazy. This is the... Uh, Ultra modern U.S. destroyer with very fast firing, rapid firing guns with SAP and HE. So I guess it was doing a little bit too much HE spamming. All right, so the Pan Asian cruisers are up next. The Chongqing, the tier five, based hull main battery reload time increased from 7.5 to 10.5 seconds. Researchable hull main battery reload time increased from 7.5 to 9.5 seconds. Torpedo tubes reload time increased from 85 to 115 seconds. Smoke generator consumable reload time increased from 100 to 110 seconds. Sigma parameter decreased from 2.05 to 2. The Ramat, the Ramat, yeah, I think I said that correctly. Main battery reload time increased from 7 to 7.5 seconds. Smoke generator consumable reload time increased from 100 to 110 seconds. Sigma parameter decreased from 2.05 to 2. So it seems like across the board, let me just, I don't want to read through all this. Um, yeah, okay. Across the board, they are receiving about a quarter of a second. Uh, increase in the reload time from the um, Chongqing, well, from the Ramat to the Sijong, yeah. And then they're also getting their smoke generator reload time increased by 10 seconds as well, 210. Okay, so that's a standardized change. Uh, the Dalian, which is the tier 9 premium one, the main battery reload time increased from 5 to 4 point, to 5.5 seconds. They removed Hydro from it. They gave her another repair party, so now she has four repair parties based. They gave her another smoke consumable. So now she has four seconds of smoke based. And the smoke generator got the reload nerf two down to 110 seconds now. And the Jinan just got the smoke uh, nerf. She did not get the reload nerf. That's the uh, the uh, Chinese Austin. All right, the incomparable main battery reload time increased from 28 to 29 seconds. Okay. Um, the Prussian. They removed the 20 millimeter AA guns due to this AA parameters of the ship were changed. Why would you remove AA guns when you're adding in freaking super carriers now? Damage of short range AA guns reduced from 291 to 245. Damage of medium range AA guns increased from 326 to 329. Continuous AA damage uh, reduced from 370 to 355. The change will come to an effect with the release of update 11.0. Okay, so for the... Italian destroyers, the tier 5, the tier 6, the tier 7, and the tier 9. In order to achieve a more consistent progression of torpedo armament in the branch, the following changes were made. 
Current torpedo modules have become researchable. Added stock torpedo modules for the... Oh, man, I'm going to butcher these Italian people. Please look at the Mafia to kill me. The Mastrel, the Vittorio Suniberti. They are similar to the torpedo modules of the Turbine and the Luca Torigo, respectively. For Averi and Adriatico, they are similar to the researchable torpedo modules of destroyers of the previous tier. Changes come to effect in the main server with the release of 11.1 as well in the public test for this update. Okay, Moving on to the to the very 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 interesting new game mode, freaking airships, y'all. So close test eleven point one airship escort changes to econo uh, economics and other news. All right, uh, again, all the information that blog is preliminary. Final information will be published on the game's website. Airship escort, a new temporary battle type airship escort will be added to the game, and the rules are as or as follows. Each team has an invulnerable airship moving along a fixed route. The task of each team is to either lead their airship to the end of its route first or destroy all enemy warships. Teams can affect the speed of the allied or enemy airship. Each airship has an interactive zone with a 3 km radius displayed around it. The airship moves faster if there are only allied ships in the zone and reduces its speed if there is at least one enemy ship in the zone. And here are some screenshots of this mode it looks basically like convoys but with airships and i think the convoys moved without you being there anyway so these you have to be within the radius of the airship to get it to move which i think is great because convoys you could go screw off and then on the other end on the other end of the map and um you know the, the, the ships would keep sailing and plus both teams have an airship and you have to escort yours to the um, end first. So it's kind of like a race, which is pretty neat. Uh, the battles will be held in a 12v12 format on tier 10 ships. They added achievements that can be earned in this battle type. Okay. Now, uh, the airships can't be destroyed, uh, which is understandable. But um, it's an interesting mode. Uh, yeah, I think it'll encourage a lot of team play because obviously you have to be near the, sh the airship to get it to go. And it just looks like like this route, they, the map route they give us here. Like, that last stretch is going to be utter chaos, and I, I would really like to see what it's going to be like there. So, um, I'm, really, I'm really interested to see how this is going to go. Um, it's, again, kind of like Overwatch. We have to escort the package, but both teams have a payload to get there. Um, now, of course, historically speaking, I, I'm pretty sure this never happened. Airships were very briefly used by... Um, the navies of the world in between the wars. And I, I'm talking about super briefly. I know the United States, uh, we lost both of ours in, um, in, in storms. And I think we grounded the, the like one that was being built afterwards, if I'm remembering correctly, and then just scrapped it later on. And that's a similar fate to most other navies' airships as well. All right, um, Pan Asian Cruisers Part 2 and 11.1, which is not the update coming out this week, well, next week, but uh, the February update. Early access to Tier 5 to 10 Pan-Asian Cruisers will continue. Oh, will continue. So in 11.0, the uh, Pan-Asian Cruisers are starting. Okay. Uh, the Pan-Asian Cruisers Part 2 flag will be added in the Dragon Port update. Man, the Dragon Port hasn't been updated in a while. All right, so Dragon Port's looking good. Flag looks ni nice, neat, and clean. Okay. So here's some big changes to the economy. Economic reward for destroying aircraft is distributed in the same way as the reward for damaging and destroying ships. Now part of the credits and XP will be credited not only for shooting down aircraft, but for also dealing damage to them. On average, the number of resources received will not change, but the, re the reward will become easier to obtain. Okay, that's, that's nice. Redistribute the XP earnings of Tier 8 and 10 aircraft carriers. They will receive more XP for destroying ships and less for dealing damage. Before the change, good battle results of Tier 8 and 10 carriers were rewarded less than the ships of other types. Because of that, even a high number of ships sunk rarely provided a place at the top of the team in terms of XP earned. Now, high activity of aircraft carriers at these tiers will be rewarded more. So rather than damage farming, you're encouraged to actually sink ships now. All right. 
ammunition resupply calls for aircraft carriers and airstrike armament will now be calculated not from the number of planes lost, but from the amount of ammunition used. Alongside that, credits will be spent for resupplying depth charges used in the battle. This will bring the cost of resupplying for ammunition of carriers, airstrike, and depth charges in line with other ammunition types, and also more expensive all around. Seems like they're still trying to fight that credit inflation we talked about before. All right, new ranked is coming out from February 16th to May 11th. The sixth ranked battle season will be held. Uh, bronze will be held 7v7 on tier 6 to 7 ships. Silver 6v6 on tier 8 to 9 ships. And gold will be 5v5 on tier 10 ships. Um, clan battles, long story short, same as, same as this current season, but it will be happening from the 21st of February to April 11th. Same thing as this season. That's all we know for now. They haven't released the maps or anything like that. Um, other changes and improvements. We already talked about the GK and Kabarovsk. They were leaving 11.1. Leaving Again, if you want to save about half a million coal, go grind up those ships right now. Research them. Don't got to purchase them. Just have them researched and you'll be good. Uh, changes to bots. Bots are being changed. Let's see this. Uh, the bots AI system was completely updated. This will allow us to set up bots for different battle types and game situations easier and faster. Due to this update, the algorithm for the behavior of bots and training battles was simplified on all difficulty levels. We do not expect any noticeable changes to bots' behavior in co-op battles, operations, and other battle types. However, since this is a massive update of a whole AI system, it's difficult to assess the, the effect of the change instantly. We will keep an eye on how the change affects the bots' behavior and make adjustments if necessary. Okay. In update 1011, the following items will be added into the game. The Weird City Permanent Camouflage for Austin. Okay. The Atlantic Permanent Camouflage for Dido and Canaries. Oh, those are cool. I like the Atlantic Camouflage. That looks nice. Um, oh my god. Um, yet... Oh god. Oh, let's get the commanders first. Uh, Pan American Commander Pedro Max Fernando Fronten. And the... Yet... Oh god. Please forgive me. Yarekasu, Dokapi, and Cat. Oh, they're Cat. Okay, I don't care. This anime stuff. Shoof! I thought these were like ships' name. Cat Commander patches. Hold up. Uh, oh wait, no, that is proper. Okay, hold up. Um, you know what? I'm going to not make you guys suffer through me trying to say that. The Cat Commander patch is cute though. Out of the firepower container, it contains tier ten ships and other rewards. Container composition. 37,500 Elite Commander XP, or 12,500 Free XP, or 900,000 Credits, 15,000 Cool, or 37,500 Free XP, or 120,000 Elite Commander XP, or 25 Special Signals of each type, or one of the following ships with a 10 point special command, uh, a 10 skill point commander. Masva, Max Immelman, Napoli, Forrester Sherman, Hayete, so Forrester Sherman is definitely coming out by at least 11.1, .1, we know that now. Salem, Marceau, Yoshino, Kerr first to Kabarovsk. 37,500 Elite Commander XP or 12,500 Free XP or 900,000 credits. What are they giving this away for? Details about the way of obtaining the... Oh, these containers and other information will be announced later. Okay. Um. Yeah, alright. I'd love to know what event this is going on for. The container looks nice, I'll give them that. But, um, yeah, brand new... Tier 10 ship, shoving it in a container right away. Good old, good old wargaming. Alright guys, so that's it for the patch notes. Some of you guys think about this in the comments down below. Um, I'm really excited for the new airships mode. I mean, any new mode in this game is, is freaking a big thing to me. Because we, we really have like three modes. Um, and really only two. I mean, the, the, the temporary game modes that, that come and go, like I've been saying, they need to add in like a game mode of the week or something. Because uh, we see these new modes, they come out, they're really neat, they're really interesting, and then they disappear for some time and rarely come back. But hopefully, with like the airships mode, the convoys mode, we'll start to see more variety added to the game. I really hope that does happen soon. But anyway guys, again, let me know what you guys think about this in the comments down below. Hope you're all having a wonderful Saturday. If you're on the East Coast or in, in this insane winter weather, stay warm, stay safe. I hope you have a wonderful week. Hope to catch you guys in the next one.